How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Quarantine Crafts with Mr. Smith. Today, we are going to make our own paint. Um, this is super helpful <clears throat> if you're wishing you could be painting while you're stuck at home, but you don't have any paint. It's pretty easy to do, and I looked up the recipe on WikiHow. There are like five different ways to make your own paint. <clears throat> the version we are going to do today uses salt, flour, warm water, and some food coloring. Oh man, I just remembered, oh, I gotta go get something. <laughs> if you go out in the yard, there is a pink egg crate in here. Sorry, I thought I had all, everything I needed. Alas, I was wrong. Okay, so to make your own flower paint, I don't know if you'll be able, I don't know if you can read that from afar. Here are the directions. Here's the website where I found them. So, we have our mixing bowl here, and we're gonna start I'm gonna pour the, it says warm water first, but I'm actually gonna pour that in second. Oh, also, I'm coming to you from broadcasting from my basement today because, I don't know, I thought it would be more fun to broadcast from the basement. It's like an underground craft thing. Uh, if you're stuck at home, stuck in the basement with nothing to do. So first, we need, oh, also, before I get there, did you know but it is totally socially acceptable to dress like an Old West bandit if you're going out anywhere. Just by the way, my, my biggest disappointment so far in quarantine is that I didn't realize that I could be wearing a bandana all the time and it'd be completely fine. Maybe it's not completely fine. We need one and a half cups of flour. I just have a one cup measuring, or a one cup measuring cup right here. I'm eyeballing it. We're not baking anything here, so I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference, but perhaps I'm wrong. So one and a half cups of flour, one and a half cups of table salt. So these are both things that hopefully you have laying around. Um, salt is gonna be pretty important if we're all stuck in quarantine for a long time, so maybe you could somehow repurpose it out of this paint <laughs> if you need it later. That's about one and a half cups. So, one and a half cups flour, one and a half cups of salt. Now I'm gonna go back to my first step. One cup of warm water. I'm mixing all of this in a mixing bowl. I'm sorry, I did not plan this out very well for how the how the camera would work. It's sitting on the table that I'm working on, which wasn't a great idea. But I'm already just streaming, so I'm just gonna go with it. Mix into a smooth liquid. I'm gonna use a fork. You could, I'm sure, use a blender. If you wanted to get really fun and dirty, I'm sure you could use your hand. But maybe just, I'm just gonna stick with a fork. I'm gonna use the little thumb ring on this mixing bowl here. Mix this up. <clears throat> Can this possibly be right? This seems super thick. <laughs> so, it's coming around in here. This seems a little too thick. I'm gonna add a little bit more water because, well, I don't know. This is like making, this is like a really thick dough right now. I'm gonna add a little more water. All right, sorry, I'm back. I know uh, this is the worst live stream ever. I keep forgetting things. I, I promise I'll get better as time goes on. This is way too thick, so I'm going to add some more water in here. And hopefully that makes it a little more liquidy. There we go. I don't want to lean it over. 
color too far because I don't want here I'll show you. You can see we're getting it's a little smoother now. So a great thing about this paint also is that it is completely non-toxic. So it's safe to have around the house. It's just sugar and flour and some food color. All right, that's pretty smooth now. Now what you're gonna do is put it in some different containers. I guess you don't need to see my face to do this. We've got a few different jars here. Don't mind that paper, that was just my schedule for the day. I'm gonna use jars, you can also use plastic cups or you know Tupperware containers. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in each one. I'm just gonna do a small sample because that seems easier to me right now. And also who needs who needs this much paint? It would probably be a good idea to like do like a third of the recipe on this rather than the whole thing. Okay, I got my flour divided and I'm gonna need some more forks. <laughs> Got my flour divided, I've got my food coloring. Hopefully you've got some food coloring just hanging out and around in your house. I'm just going to make the primary colors today because that's basically all you need to make all the other colors except for black, obviously. I'm gonna start with just a few drops of food coloring. I got another fork to mix these with. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty nice. I'm gonna add a little bit more to make it a little bit darker blue. Since I don't have black, I might actually use just a really dark blue as a black in whatever I'm painting. All right, so there it is. My blue paint. Next up. Oh, I'm going to use this one for the yellow one since the label's yellow on it. Put some red in here. Get a new fork to mix this. Gonna want to use a new fork each time so that you don't accidentally mix all of your colors together and end up with just brown. We are going to do some mixing here in a little bit, but we're going to save that for when we actually want to be mixing colors. And yellow. Sorry if this stirring sound is really obnoxious in this video. <clears throat> Alright. So I've got my red, blue, and yellow. Next up, you may be asking yourself, what are you gonna do if you need green or purple? Well, you could mix those two, but you could just stick with your three primary colors. I have an old egg crate here that I am going to use for my palette. So I'm gonna use this to blend my colors. So I will start with, actually, I'll flip this down again. Can you see that on there? Oh. Maybe help if I turn it down like this. All right, I'm gonna start with my blue. Just put a blob of my non-toxic blue paint in here. Here is my red, which is a little more like pink, but that's okay. Here is my yellow. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my secondary colors. Do about a half portion of blue and a half portion of yellow. 
And that is going to make green. Going to do, oh no, I put the, <laughs> I got some blue in my yellow. That's okay. Going to put yellow and red so I can make orange. And then over here, I'm going to do blue and red so that I can make purple. Now you might be asking yourself, well, that's all well and good, Mr. Smith. I have paints now, but I don't have any paint brushes. For that purpose, I am going to use some Q-tips. I'm also going to use these to mix my secondary colors. So I got my blue and my red and my yellow. Here I'm going to mix, mix my yellow and blue to make our green paint. Mixing up our red and blue to make our purple. And finally, mixing up our red and yellow to make an orange. I know it might be kind of hard to tell what those colors are in this <clears throat> in this uh, egg crate, since it is also pink. Now <clears throat> we have all of our colors made. I'm going to shift over here. Now I'm going to shift it back up here. Just going to tilt the camera back. So, when you've got all of your colors made, you can paint whatever it is you want to paint, obviously. I'm going to do one real quickly here. I'm just going to paint a color wheel. So, the color wheel, if you're not familiar, is super cool. It shows the relationships between all the colors, how they fit into each other. And we start with our primary colors. So I'm going to start with blue here. <laughs> and paint it on here. Um, it's, this is like kind of clumpy on here. It might be a good idea to have some extra water around to add to your paints. Yeah, you might want to thin those out. Like I said, I got this off of WikiHow. Um, so there's our blue. Next up, I'm just going to go ahead and add a little water to each of my colors so that they're not quite so clumpy. <clears throat> if you want to make your own color wheel at home, you can do it just like this. I'm going to—I'm sort of doing them in little uh, pie slices so that you can kind of see. Oh, that red looks super pink. Pink is still technically red. It's just a, uh, a lighter tint of red. In case you were wondering, a little color theory for you. There's my red. And here is my yellow. Kind of hard to see. My basement doesn't have the best lighting for live streaming. Probably a poor choice overall. All right, there's my yellow. Next up, I'm going to do my secondary colors. So each secondary color is going to go in between the two colors that make it. So in between blue and red, we're going to paint our purple. Um, if you have paint brushes at home, it would probably work better than these Q-tips. <laughs> but desperate times, right? We gotta use what we got. Uh, next up, orange. It's gonna go in between my yellow and red. Uh oh, my blue is trickling down into my red. That's okay. You don't have to hold yours upright as you paint it. That'll simplify some things for you. And then between blue and yellow, I'm gonna put my green. Those colors, the secondary colors actually turned out pretty well. I wasn't sure how well they would mix, but those are pretty nice. So there is my color wheel. Please don't judge my painting abilities based on just this wheel. Anyway, 
So if you want to make some kind of clumpy paint that might make a big mess, this is a recipe that you could use. And after you're all done with it, um, if you put it in a jar, you can just screw the lid back on, save that for later. It'll stay good for a while. And even if it gets hard, you can just add a little bit more water and you will be able to loosen that paint back up. Until next time, thanks for watching Quarantine Crafts with Mr. Smith. If you give this one a shot and paint something with it, um, share a picture with me or send it to my email or something. Share it with me so I can check it out. Anyway, hope you're having a great day and staying safe. Bye.